So welcome everybody to a brand new Stretford Paddock podcast. You may recognise my voice, my face, Angelina Kelly here and I am joined on this podcast. We have got another female. I am so excited about this. We have got Alexis, well not joining me, this is our podcast together. Two exactly. women talking about Man United. I'm excited. Fresh out of the kitchen. Here exactly. we are. Before you all start about two <laughs> women hosting a podcast, yes, we've taken time away from slaving over the stove in the kitchen. We've we've come out to talk about football. I'll be honest, we don't have a name for this podcast. Maybe no. out out of the kit, fresh out the kitchen. I don't know. Fresh out of the kitchen. I yeah, think let it's us know, favorite. guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let us know. I mean, we will absolutely take suggestions if it's nice. You know, if they're quite good. They're yeah. best, but yeah, I think for, I like fresh house in the kitchen. I, I'm the feeling kitchen. that that's a good vibe, but we're not just here to talk about the name of our podcast because we have a, a full show and yeah. we shall be talking to none other than Henry Winter a little bit later. Make sure to go and check out all of our latest merch at paddockmerch.com. We've got loads of new designs and even more products come in all the time. With two or more items, you get 20% off using the code PADDOCK20. And if you remember, there's even bigger discounts available. Link is in the description. So for the next part of this podcast, we have got an interview with the one and only Henry Winter. Thank you so much for joining us, Henry. How are things? Thanks very much. I mean, it's kind of good to be getting out of the international break and getting back to, uh, to, to the Premier League drama. Yes, and drama there is when it comes to Manchester United, <laughs> left, right and centre, it seems. Myself and Alexis have just been talking about um, Donny van der Beek. We've been talking about the whole, we have this thing with the podcast, you know, get off his back. And he's been getting some support, a bit of hate as well. Um, and I don't know, I'm just one of those like, he's got, he's having a tough time, leave him be. And we just wanted to get your thoughts on the predicament that he finds himself in, because for, for me, it just seems more than anything else, it's, it's quite sad to see. Look, the world we live in at the moment, people sort of debate the meaning of life, the meaning of football, the meaning of managers, the meaning of players, at, at a throw in, at a corner. People, people need time and also players need to be played in the right position. I mean, if you look at Van der Beek's career, particularly at Ajax, OK, he could play as a, a number six and he, he's talked about that. Um, but also I think his best work was towards the end when he was playing more as a number 10. And I think it was, well, it was only two years ago that he was on the, the long list for, for the Ballon d'Or. I think he ended up finishing sort of like joint 28th, 29th. So look, there's a clearly a very good player in there, but I don't know. I'm looking at it from the outside, but he doesn't seem to me necessarily to have been an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer signing because I think he would have been given more opportunities if, if he was. But, but the issue is, if you've got a player like that, he's not... He's not a replacement for McFred. He, he does his better work further forward. Yeah. So if you're going to see, Manchester United are going to see the best out of him. They're going to have to play him further forward. But of course, that issue is probably your best player is, is Bruno. And that's, and that's his world there. So you've got a huge issue there. I mean, if I were him, I would think I can either outlast Ole Gunnar Solskjaer if I think he's not going to last that long, or I leave in in January. Because at some point, he's got, he, he's what, 24? He's got to make a, choice yeah. for his career particularly with the world cup coming up in what 14 months time probably less mm -hmm. so look it's there's a good plan i like the way that he's kept his head down he's focused apparently you know you talk to people around the club he's very professional in training there's not so really a squeak of dissent out of him but clearly he must be frustrated absolutely I mean, we frustrated. saw it with think, the chewing gum yeah. didn't we <laughs> exactly yeah and i think a lot of people look at him and they think that he's so quite um subdued and 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 not sh kicking off like we know some other people would and probably the fact that he is quite so young still I mean to be honest though when you're looking at the likes of Mbappe and Mason Greenwood and whatnot doing big things already at their age he's not that young he's not that young to want to sit down on a bench and just say well I have my whole world ahead of me no you're kind of close um to I guess these peak years or he's entering peak years isn't he Henry for him to probably start sweating a little yeah, and I think that he's got a big call to make in January. I mean, you look at the the, the club, they spent, what, was it 30, 35 million with possibly sort of five add-ons? You know, that's quite an outlay. So clearly someone in the club believed in him. But he's got, he, at some point, he's got, to, he's got to be selfish. 
And he's got to go in and say to Solskjaer, listen, play me. But, I, but in fairness to Solskjaer, he's not going to get in ahead of Bruno. He's not one of these wide players like a sort of Greenwood or a Rashford or Sancho who could play either side. He's also got Lingard, who does a lot of his good work coming through the middle like that. I think it's there's obviously an extra frustration because if I look at Manchester United, clearly your, your biggest weakness is in central midfield. The whole sort of McFred thing. Look, that might be addressed next year with Declan Rice or, or Bellingham coming in. Um, and people look at Van der Beek and say, play him as a number six. You know, play him ahead of Fred, play him ahead of uh, McTominay. But actually, you're not replacing like with like, you know. So I would like to see him given a chance in his best position. You've got a, such a sort of fuselage of fixtures coming up that there must be an yeah. opportunity to give him a give him a try. And don't just drop him in and out. Don't just give him five minutes at the end of the, the game. I mean, I think he's played about 39 games so far. And what is it? But 22 of them are sub. So Ollie's got to give him a bit of love. But then again, does Ollie really want him? I'm not sure he does. Yeah, I think that's the, the thing. I remember... Um... Just around the start of the season, we did um, we did a little we had a write up at ESPN about pretty much ranking all of Man United's best to worst signings. I think in the last decade, and there was actually a case made not for me. I was actually the only one that kicked off because there was a case made to chuck in Donny Van der Beek in that list after the last year that we saw, well, 2019 to 2020. And I said it's really hard. I get where you're coming from, but it's really really hard to give him criticism when he's not really been given a, a chance and people say, well, he's come on here and there and he's not really done enough with the time he's given. Uh, where do you guys think of it? Because th that's, I think, one of the biggest arguments that go against him, the fact that, look, do what, you know what, like what Jesse Lingard is doing now, he only has 10 minutes that he comes on as a super sub. Does Jesse really want 10 minutes? No, but you instantly see that impact and that we've just not seen enough of that from Donny van der Beek. And if he should be realizing that this may be his role for now, then make the most of the super sub kind of role that we've seen. I agree with that, but then it, it's it's quite a specific role he's being asked to come into if he does come on as a as a, as a number six, a more defensive player. I mean, at least Lingard when he comes on, it's often when you, you're chasing a game and you know you, you're throwing you're throwing bodies forward, and that's and that's what he's good at. So I, I think look, give him a bit of patience, give him a bit of time, but it's uh, I do understand Solskjaer's position. Did he want him in the first place? Can he bring him on and take Bruno off? The fans, you know, you'd be up in arms if, if Bruno yeah. was taken off of Van der Beek coming on. But it's it's one of those ones, you know, it's not necessarily a binary position. You can actually have understanding on both sides. But if Solskjaer is going to be there for, you know, next year for, for, for a while, I think Van der Beek has to leave, obviously, on loan because you're not going to recoup 40, 35, 40 million on him. No, and I guess, you know, you kind of hope, will he have, I mean, I know there's been a lot of talk about potentially Juventus, but then there's been news that some people have said that he's not the type of player that Juventus need. They need somebody that's going to be able to make that initial impact. Um, but I guess, I don't know, for most United fans, you kind of keep your fingers crossed because I think a lot of people do look at him and do just feel bad for him and just kind of yeah. like the Lingard situation. You want him to come good. Yeah. And, you know, maybe fingers crossed he will get a loan move that... Um, that can maybe instill that and maybe, you know, give him that, that kind of boost that he clearly needs because it is sad. And it's funny, like you mentioned the, the international break at uh, the international break, the mm -hmm. um, international side of it as well, because, you know, the world cup is fast approaching. I think we've only just got over the Euros, but, um, <laughs> and you know, that, um, that Netherlands side will want to, you know, uh, do well. And I think it's, you know, the other thing is that there were those rumors that Edwin van der Sar had kind of convinced him, Yes. To make the move. And I just think it's yes. just, you look at the oh list of things goodness. that are going on, it's, it's, it's to not this a day, good look. To this day, I remember Edwin's tweet, remember, where he said to United, take care of my boy. And now it's like, oh my goodness, it, his heart must be breaking as well. But what do you do? You know, it's just, it just kind of feels like he could be the right player, but just at the wrong time, isn't it? Yeah. Because of Bruno. I mean, it is. Yeah. Uh, it's it's oh, you know, it's quite. Cool. I in a, in a way, it's a nice situation for Manchester United to be in because they've got a player of Bruno's quality. But it's it's not a good position for Van der Beek, in it. and at some point, he's going to have to make a big call for his career. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, you 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 look across the pitch, and I guess, like you say, it's not like a a, te a terrible problem to have, but I guess a terrible <laughs> problem we could be having is obviously the defense because Mr. Rafael Varane is out seemingly um Harry Maguire as well 
Do you look at the defensive options that Manchester United have and maybe a little bit worried for us going into the upcoming fixtures? I'm always slightly worried about Manchester United's defence. It's a given, isn't it? <laughs> I'm bricking it. I'm going to tell you straight up, I am absolutely bricking it, man. I might go and offer my services. Do you know I mean, what I mean? I, might... I read something that it was going to be a really good chance for, for Eric Bailly to, you know, like a good opportunity for him to, to show us what he's made of. And I'm just like, I, I don't need good opportunities for people. I just need reliable people that we are not, like you say, bricking it, looking at the starting lineup. There's a good player in Bay though. You think yeah. of the 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 athleticism is is not too bad. So technically, you know, he can read the game, but he, you know, he has got a mistake in him. I think that's the that's the issue, and that's why Manchester United wanted a player of sort of Varane's. I mean, Varane is just. Well, I saw his. I think it was his debut at Molyneux, and his first tackle. The first thing he did was to sort of step in midfield and close down. I think it was Matinho, and you just think. He just reads the game and he'll make Maguire a better player. So I know he's not necessarily, you know, set the, 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 uh, the league alight since stepping in there uh, at Manchester United. But Verat was it for Champions League. He's a, he's a class act. So I assume against Leicester, you'll be have Bailly and Lindelof. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's a, the possibility of dropping McTominay back in there. But I, I assume he'll go with the McTominay Pogba um, central midfield. Uh, McTominay played really well on the right side of a three against England during the Euros at, at Wembley. I think he was excellent then. He, you know, he he can play that role. But I think if you're going to play a two, you need uh, Lindelof and um, by. I think it would be too early for F Phil Jones to come back. I think that would be um, that would be quite a quite a surprise if some people saw that on the uh, on on the team sheet. Um, I mean, it'd be a fantastic story of redemption if, if Phil you know Jones what? comes back in and has a great game. If that happened, I would be sat there with my fingers crossed for him to score a winning goal. Like, yeah, that's honestly, cool. can you imagine the scenes? <clears throat> a Phil Jones screamer. Oh, give that to me any day. <laughs> what, one thing about Phil Jones, look, you can't pick your team on nice players and good people. But I mean, I've interviewed him down the years going back to Blackburn. I've interviewed him at Carrington. This, I've actually got a bit of sympathy for him. I just think there's a, you know, you saw the abuse that, uh, you know, he got on social media and, you know, people, memes and everything about him. There is a hardworking professional in there. You know, you don't see him falling out in nightclubs or on the front pages of paper. There's a good, you know, there's a, there's a decent man there who's just been very unfortunate with injuries. I mean, it was a career-threatening injury that he had. And you think any of us in whatever walk of life, whatever profession we're in, if you were told particularly something that's A, well paid, and B, is a passion, as it is for Phil Jones, and you're told you can't do that, and you're basically probably only, what, a third, not even that, a quarter of the way through through your life, that is a pretty brutal test of someone's mental strength. So I, I agree with you completely. If Phil Jones comes on the pitch, even for five minutes, I think it would be spectacular. Having said that, you're up against Jamie Vardy. And the thought yeah. of Bill Jones coming up against Jamie Vardy, I would 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 give, I'm sure, the strep for them kittens. Vardy, four and four, he'll look at Bayer and Lindelof and he'll want to race Lindelof. He'll want to spin Bayer as well. So De Gea might have to be quite quick off his line. Who actually has um, been brilliant so far, though, because that's going to be my, I suppose, my next question. Because looking at the fixtures, of course, Leicester, Atalanta, Liverpool, Spurs, Atalanta again, and then City. Um, I almost want to say, which one are you sweating for the most? But I suppose we sweat for all of them of late. But which of the which of the boys that are lucky, looking to be out, I suppose, do you feel would be missed the most? Of course, you miss all of them and the unit that they have been being right now. But still, it's um, it's it, it's it's kind of a tough one. I, I would say it's a good time to play Leicester City. I mean, they're my local club. I live in the Midlands. Obviously, sort of follow them closely. You know, Johnny Evans has got this strange foot injury, so he looks like he's out. Indeed, he's out. For Fana is frustratingly out for the season after a very stupid tackle on him pre-season, which people around here are still angry about, quite rightly. They're less of vulnerable at set pieces. Um, so Inchu is off the pace. Um, looks better when Evans is alongside him. So, he, you know, he misses that. And when Fafana's pace is around him as well. So from Manchester United's perspective, this is probably a good time to be playing Leicester. There's a little bit of sort of doubt and a little bit dissent in certain quarters of the Leicester fan base, not the hardcore home and away, 
but on social media towards Brendan Rodgers, a little bit of speculation in the air with, with Newcastle United. I think that might be a bit premature. But you just look at here, it's not a bad time to be playing Leicester. But if you look at Manchester United's issues at the back, and I know this is not necessarily in Solskjaer's DNA, but Manchester United really just, you know, you just absolutely have to flood forward and, and go with it. Because you've got two defences who haven't actually done great things this season. Both of them have got issues at centre-back with injuries. So if it's if it's nil-nil, I will be very surprised. But I just think this is a game... So I take your point about looking at the games down the road and you look at you know City further down the road, Atalanta home and away, that is going to be tricky, particularly they've got yeah. a bit of pace that might, might travel you and skill and you know their will team. But this one... You've got to set the tone for these next five, six games by winning this and by winning it, by being on the front foot. Don't be cautious. Don't sit back. Don't say, right, let's build around McTominay in the field. Absolutely go for it. Just unleash your players out wide. I mean, I was at uh, Andorra. I know it's only Andorra. I know it's a ski resort. I know it's, you know, they've got (laughs) 41-year-olds. You know, they've got people more my generation playing up against Jaden Sancho than, than Jaden Sancho's generation. But they got, you know, and I just thought Sancho was good there. And maybe his confidence is coming back in. He played on the left. He's, I mean, I just think Manchester United, I look, I look at your front four and I think, wow, you know, you really should be competing for the highest yeah. honours. Um, I then look at your central midfield and I can say, well, that counterbalance is that. I can see why the issues you've got there. <laughs> But you've got Rashford coming back. And if he's now he's got that shoulder problem sorted out, you know, and Manchester United overplayed Rashford last season. Solskjaer has overplayed Rashford in the past. Yeah. And this is a kid who just wants to play. So Manchester United fan, it, it slightly irritates me a bit when I see Rashford getting stick, particularly for the stick about, oh, um, he's getting distracted by the work that he does off the pitch. He is incredibly focused and professional with the people mm-hmm. he's got around him, with the uh, with the sports scientists, with the dart. I mean, you've only got to see him take his top off and just see. I mean, it's like a, it's almost like an eight hundred meter runner. I mean, he's got that. He's just got that very willowy sprint. There's, you know, there's not an ounce of fat on him. So you've got these fantastic players, and just to see Rashford coming in. I mean, I, I checked the stats earlier. He played sixty six games last season while carrying an injury. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Didn't complain. And then obviously he had that horrendous abuse after, you know, remember that was his last touch of a ball, you know, was missing the penalty in the Euro final. Still scored 23 goals last season. So look, he's a, he's a special person. He's a special player and unleash him. You've got Sancho as a, it's, everyone talks about Sancho as a flyer. He's not really a flyer. If you looked at him in in Germany, he'd cut in a lot and everyone has been talking and I can, I can understand Manchester United fans saying this, that Sancho needs to pick up the pace and the rhythm of how Manchester United play. But also, I think it works the other way. Manchester United have got to look about how you get the best out of Sancho. And he's not necessarily a direct flyer that Rashford, who just sort of will chase the fullback, get behind the fullback. He likes to cut inside. You saw it with, uh, with, with, with England. He wasn't necessarily against the byline and, and hooking the ball back. He was actually sort of delivering it a bit earlier, particularly for, for Tammy Abraham's goal. And, and also for, uh, for, for Chilwell, with, with actually his run into the box. He's, he's quite a varied player. So if I was, look, I'm no coach, I'm no, I'm no player, but it seems to me that if you're looking at what he can do, work on the relationship between Sancho and Bruno when he comes, yeah. when he comes inside. Look at the relationship, the, the link-up between Sancho and you know, one of the world's greatest ever players in, in Cristiano Ronaldo, and you will bring the best out of Sancho. Final thing I'll say on him, he's got two assists at the weekend. Okay, it was against a ski resort, but it was a ski resort that, you know, had about half the country sort of seemingly blocking the way to goal, and he still got two assists, and he left a 41-year-old with a shredded hamstring. So there's a class player there. Um, But but again, it's Manchester United, get on the front foot, be positive, attack. You know what, when you just mentioned Ronaldo then, I completely forgot about him for a second. <laughs> I'm just, it just came to my attention. I was like, oh my God, yeah, he's back. We have Ronaldo. <laughs> I was when thinking of the... the other day. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I don't even know how it slipped my mind, but you know, when you just have, I keep having these moments knowing that he's back. I, I have these moments where it's like, oh my like, God, he's playing for real. Man United again. It is exactly, it's yeah, real. I actually do have those. When I went to the Villa game, 
Um, I know, I mean, I had to do the whole trip up to Manchester. There were train issues, everything. And it only hit me. I forgot when I finally saw him coming out and I was like, all right. I was at that out. game and I felt exactly, exactly the same. I mean, yeah. we'll, we'll forget that game though, because no, we, it was absolutely miserable. Manchester but United to, men and women that weekend, it was a riot. weekend yeah. is, <laughs> We, we put that in the past. We put that in the past and we buried. But actually, sorry to just bring it back again to Donny van der Beek, but of course, just hearing, um, you know, Henry talking about who one probably should feature in this next run of games, as we know, they're quite good ones. As we were talking about Donny van der Beek again, and you were saying that he should get a feature, but a proper feature, some lengthy time, not just say, let's give him 10, 15 minutes and say, make the best of this, Donny, you know. Um, I absolutely agree with you in those. Which of these fixtures do you think... Um, probably Ole should be looking at, even though we're not ones to tell Ole what to do, or which ones, you know, do you think probably would fancy the way he he kind of plays? I mean, again, it's difficult because that would involve Bruno not playing. I think yeah. as the season goes on and Bruno is such a sort of committed player and you just see his work rate in games and, and the, the yards that he covers, at some point he is going to need a, need a break. Maybe if, yeah. if you're up, you can sort of rest him earlier in games. But, you know, it's, it's difficult because because you've got a fantastic number 10 in there and Van der Beek really that's his his best position maybe in one of the, maybe against Atlanta if it's going a certain way but you look at all those games none of them are going to be easy you know exactly. i mean maybe if you're sort of two up against Leicester you could you could bring him on but i i think it's going to be sort of 5 10 minutes here and there i just can't i just simply can't see how he gets in certainly not if Bruno's playing and I know you've had one or two sort of you know strong wins but if it's a tight game are you going to take Bruno off is Solskjaer going to take Bruno off that's the no. thing would you want to take Bruno off <laughs> no you almost Bruno can't even like... agree to come off <laughs> come off that's a thing at this point I don't think so he, he and Cristiano will have some chats in the corner and I think even Cristiano would turn around and be like he's, oh, he's not moving he's staying he's not moving <laughs> But, uh, Second uh, coach. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good, like touching on, you know, Marcus Rashford and, and his return and Sancho coming off the back of, um, you know, a, a good game against Andorra. I feel like definitely the return of Marcus Rashford, you know, for fans and, and the players and everything, it's, it's going to be a massive boost, not just on the pitch, but I feel like morale as well, um, especially yeah. when you do consider, like you say, the last touch he had of a ball was that horrific moment um I know me personally I'm really looking forward to it I know that there are rumors of it potentially happening in the Leicester game I don't know how much he would feature if he does but yeah I do feel like that is going to be a, a really big boost for Man United you know what's been really good about supporters this season well first having back in grounds I mean having been to about 150 games without fans during the pandemic, first having fans back is just key. But but just the sort of the compassion and the support they've shown for the three players yeah. who missed yeah. penalties. Sancho's received it, but particularly Bukayo Saka. And they say, you know, in the first game of the season, even when he was warming up, Brentford fans stood and applauded him. When he came on, the Brentford fans stood up and applauded him. See, when he came on for Arsenal. And I think that's brilliant. And I, I think that's really important because we forget that... We think of footballers occasionally as robots. They're not. They're flesh and blood. You know, they, they, they know what goes on on social media. I've seen the abuse that um, Rashford, in particular, I think after one of the European games last season, you know, he, uh, the, the abuse that he was getting on Facebook or Instagram as well as Twitter, and it's absolutely disgraceful. And we forget that these are young professionals who cares, and Rashford cares deeply about Manchester United. Mm -hmm and cares obviously about England as well. So what happened in the penalty shootout will hurt him. What happened, you know, when he didn't, wasn't able to sort of deliver in the, you know, in the, in the final for Manchester United last season will have hurt him as well. But you know what, when he went to, well, like where you're, the final was in Poland somewhere, wasn't it? In the, um, in the Europa League last season. Where was it? You feel oh, like Europa League. Oh my yeah, God. it was, um, it was Poland. Where have you, where have you flew out to? I, he's he's he had a problem with his foot as well as his shoulder. Yeah. And he had trouble. He had trouble getting his his shoes on. And yeah. you just think, well, this is a can't call him a kid now. He's what, so 22, 23. This is this is a an athlete, one of your own. Very incredibly proud of playing. Hates not playing. Loves representing Manchester United. And he was carrying two injuries, obviously the shoulder and the one in the foot as well. So. It'd be fantastic to see him 
this season for just for Manchester United's benefit, for his benefit, for England's long term benefit. But, you know, one player we haven't mentioned who we mentioned the whole time to Southgate is Mason Greenwood. And yeah. I find it completely, you may understand why, but I, I mean, you're probably relieved he's not in the England squad so he can focus and stay fit and be unleashed <laughs> on, uh, on, I assume, Ryan Bertrand at the oh, weekend. Yes. But, but he should be in the England squad. I mean, 100%. if you look at the most talented, who are the most talented young players in this country? Um, Bellingham, Apart Foden, Greenwood, just in terms of natural gifts as well. Uh, Sancho, probably you, you, you put in that in the top five as well. There's some amazingly talented players, but Greenwood in terms of balance, in terms of left foot, right foot, in terms of his finishing, gets the shot away. Ice, ice cool under pressure. He's, he's, a, he's a fabulous player. And I don't know what you think. Personally, I see him as a, a number nine long term. I think it's good that he's, he's sort of learning his trade, sort of cutting in from the right. But I, I think he will be Manchester United's and England centre forward for about five or six years. Obviously, he's learning from one of the greats in, um, in, in Ronaldo and also Cavani. You look at Cavani's movement, and I assume he won't be back in time because Brazil are playing Uruguay. So even if he is back, he's not going to be 100%. But you just look, everyone focuses on Ronaldo, rightly, because he's yeah. an absolute monster of statistics. Of, he's just fantastic on the pitch with what he delivers. But Cavani, for a young player too, to learn from Cavani's movement, the runs he makes to the near post just the intelligence of the plate, always, always up for it. Quick as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's great to see Mason Greenwood. But you know what, we, we've come back, you started by talking about sort of problems in defence, but the positives are all over the, the final yes. third for Manchester United. Yeah. But just let them rip. Yeah, I think I think that's one of the things as well that um, frustrated me actually live now to see. Sorry to bring it back to that Villa game. <laughs> that was the last one I saw live. But Mason Greenwood, especially even in that first half, was absolutely outrageous. It was almost like, does he even need Cristiano Ronaldo there? You know, and, and people were always wondering whether having someone there, because we've heard of, you know, when Zlatan was at Man United, even when, you know, he wasn't playing I suppose to the best of his abilities or that the fact that he was older he had obviously peaked but just the impact he had the influence he had caused everyone to kind of hit another gear and I think Mason Greenwood just was outrageous I could barely finish my homework at his age and he's finishing some balls that I was like outrageous and I just kept thinking that why was anyone ever worried about kind of an impact of Cristiano on Mason Greenwood because I feel I'm already you know, I don't know, Mason kind of in a nice way, in a good way, wants to show, guess what? I'm a big man on campus here too. I, I don't think anyone in the club doubted uh, Ronaldo's would, would sort of, I, you know, his influence on him because you've only got to, I mean, if, you, if you're a player and you're in the dressing room at training at Carrington and you see Ronaldo come in and you see him come in early, and you just see the way he prepares, the way he stretches. And then, you know, he, he takes his shirt off and you just look at what amazing sort of shape that he is in. You then More look at, uh, <laughs> his, he, you know, you look at his, his diet, his nutrition, the way he strengthens through, through the way he eats. So he, I think he has, what, five meals through the day to sort of let it mm -hmm. sort of absorb in um, more, more efficiently. I mean, he is just, he is just a re remarkable. And if anyone can't, you know, if anyone doesn't learn from him, you know, then they're mad. I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's the Oxford and Cambridge and throw and Yale and Harvard of, of, of learning establishments for a young player to actually look, you know, to look at and learn from him. So I think, look, there's, there's so many positives to having Ronaldo at, at the club. I mean, commercially, obviously, it's, it's, it's off the scale. Social media, it's off the scale. I'm sure the, uh, the, the dreadful Glazers will be looking at the share price, thinking, wow, look at what Ronaldo's done, done for us. Um, but on purely football grounds, the impact at Carrington, the impact on the pitch to have someone like Ronaldo, and also little technical, tactical things, is that if you're the opposition and you've got Ronaldo there, probably two of you are going to go to him. That creates space for someone else. And just um, not to be a bit of a Debbie Downer, but uh, just comparing, I suppose, United now, because, again, like you said, we, 
we sit here and we almost feel like it's Christmas the way we talk about the attacking prowess that Manchester United has right now. And it just reminds me as well of um, now, of course, because I cover La Liga heavily with ESPN, um, looking at Real, <clears throat> Real Madrid, it's, it's similar things as well, uh, even though you'd argue that United have more. And now, of course, uh, the Achilles heel for Madrid is their defense, which kind of as well, you can argue a little bit with Man United to get there. And of course, essential central um, central midfield too. But you still see Real Madrid coming back and not to compare Premier League teams to La Liga teams, but still elsewhere, they, they have a way of outscoring opponents like shamelessly. And, you know, they come back. And of course, we know that United... At least in the last two seasons, we've had that thing where you go down and then you come a new team in the in the second half. Do you are you a bit surprised, I suppose, Henry? And of course, Ange, that you haven't seen United outscoring teams as you'd think their attacking unit suggests they should? Well, they should do. You should do. And maybe that's partly down to, to, to the manager, partly down to the sort of, you know, the culture and the philosophy of the team partly down to the fact that you've got this fantastic front four, just, just let them rip. You, you need the sort of the, the balance in midfield, the boys who are going to win the, uh, the ball back. Um, that will improve if you do get a Declan Rice in there. Jude Bellingham's a different player. He can sort of, he's more sort of box to box. But, you know, if you do sort of strengthen with those sort of players in there, it will make your front four even... But you know what? Let's, it's difficult to compare the Premier League with anyone else because yeah. who would have expected at the start of the season Brentford, who I, in my wisdom, tipped to go down 18th, 19th or 20th place, and they come up, they're organised. I mean, remember yeah. that these aren't poor clubs nowadays. You know, OK, so Norwich have shown a slight lack of ambition, but Norwich still went and spent a fair bit in the, uh, in, in the market. So although the pandemic yeah. has, has battered clubs and in, you know, in La Liga and in Italy as well, uh, they, they've had issues. But, you know, you still, you still see English clubs go out and strengthen and that, of course, is, has caused problems. I mean, that's why I love covering the Premier League, because you know that every game, pretty much every game, is going to be competitive and you're going to get sort of shock results and all that, which, which is good. So, look, that is slightly to, to be sympathetic towards Solskjaer. But I do think he has to a attack more. I can understand the frustration there. But this broader point on Solskjaer, and it seems we haven't had a, sort of, haven't had a debate about Solskjaer for 10 days. I'm sure it'll happen against Leicester. <laughs> But you know what? With probably in a spa, thanking he, the Lord for this. <laughs> he, he he has changed the mood around the club. You know, yeah. it, it was it was it was quite toxic. It's too strong a word, but it was getting very very tense yeah. at Carrington in the club. So actually, to have he's changed that, but he's been backed in the transfer market. He's now got to show that he can change games. That he is he can pick the right team. He's tactically smart. I'm a huge fan of, of, of Michael Carrick as a coach. I think he's an outstanding coach. But I just think we just need to see more of that on the pitch. And you are Manchester United, you know, attack, particularly when you've got this extraordinary array of attacking talent. And you are, if you're going to leave the back door open, you know, fair enough. But just make sure you're peppering the opposition goals. But one thing I will say, you're fortunate that your goalkeeper's in such good form. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Thank I mean, the Lord. Yeah. The Great Wall of Spain. Only Jesus saves more. <laughs> the, the, things are going well with with the goalkeeper. I don't even want to speak any negativity towards him. Yep. He's playing well, and that's all I can ask for. And and like you say, I'm I'm coming out of this conversation. I'm feeling quite positive, like because Me too. you know what? Things aren't perfect. Things are never going to be perfect. But when you look at those players, you know, like Ronaldo that I forgot about before. There are a, a lot of positives. And, and before we, we finish off, Emmy, I wanted to, to ask you, maybe not an actual prediction for the, the Leicester game, but what are your maybe expectations or hopes for Man United in this, in this run-up of games? Or if you've got a prediction, we will take a prediction as well. I think it'll beat Leicester because they've got problems at the back. And I can see Sancho being um, rejuvenated by what happened, OK, against the ski resort. I think Rashford on the bench will give a will give a buzz. I can see Vardy scoring, though. So, um, yeah. but I mean, you know, if you win 3-1, I think it's also, look, everything's about results, but also Manchester United, you know, you should be doing things with a bit of style, with a bit of swagger. You've got Ronaldo probably in the top three, top five, 
greatest players of all time. Not just currently, it's between him and Messi currently, but of all time. You can then throw, a, you know, obviously a Pelé and a, well, obviously a Madonna in there. Um, so, so let's say you've got one of the top four players of all time. You should be excited. You should be building towards him. You should be telling him, don't come out wide. I don't think he will. He'll be very much, you know, between the posts. Use his run, play off him, and then just unleash all that talent that young talent you've got around him, Sancho, Rashford when he comes on, Greenwood, you've obviously got sort of Bruno, the sort of quarterback, number 10 in there. You know, you should be excited about Manchester United. They were having gone there two or three times this season. There is a buzz about the place, yeah. but Solskjaer has really just got to just unleash, unleash them a little bit more. Unleash the beast. It's so funny okay. that this reminds me of all of the talk of England and Gary Southgate during the Euros. I, of course, as an outsider, being a Jamaican, looking in and seeing how all the fuss was made there. And I was covering the Euros. And my producer was always like, ask everybody the same question. And I remember asking both Calvin Phillips after the first match against Croatia and then Saka when he um, came on and scored. Like, so when when are you going to be unleashed? You know, it looked like you wanted to. And you know Calvin, of course, and of course Saka as well. And they were just like, oh, you know, the gaffer says that it's, it's always good to manage these games first. And then we saw them unleashed against Ukraine, I suppose. But it's almost like this with United. You want to be unleashed against the Villas. You want to be unleashed against a, a wounded Leicester. But you're wondering if there's a bit of that Gareth Southgate mentality where it's like, just manage it to a point and then unleash it. And whether that actually does help or harm the team a bit more than you want. Put, put it this way. When Solskjaer eventually leaves, Southgate won't be on Manchester United's list. <laughs> <laughs> He's not, he's just Absolutely. not that level of manager. He's, Absolutely he's, not. he's good for England at the moment. He's changed the yeah. culture, man management. Yeah. He's he's got all the players to open up about their uh, their difficult backstories, the adversity they faced on the way. He's rebuilt relations with the media and more importantly with the supporters. So they're cultural changes that he's made. But in terms of the Croatia semi final and the Italy final, mm -hmm. he, he he cost England. He didn't react. And I'm sure Manchester United fans will say there'd be moments with Solskjaer has echoed that for the club in, in crunch moments. Look, they're both good people. Good people don't, you know, the meat don't inherit the, the earth. But I just think if Solskjaer being an attacker, being the ultimate embodiment of Manchester United's adrenaline rush. I mean, I'm still recovering from 99. I filed my first, <laughs> I filed my first piece at 1-0 Bayern Munich, my second piece at 1-1 because split seconds, print, yeah. print sites rolling. And then rang up the office and said, by the way, you won't guess what? Yes, we're watching on television. And then sort of did a, a rewrite because of, of Solskjaer. So he's <laughs> the ultimate embodiment of that Manchester United adrenaline rush. So I hope his team reflect that. Here's hoping. Fingers crossed. I remember saying that too, that it's like having, you know, a McLaren, a Maserati, a Ferrari all in your garage. And then you say, do you know what? I think I'm just going to go with a Nissan today. No. <laughs> Let me just say it. <laughs> well, he's got a bit more when you look at his arsenal. But yeah, it's uh, I guess we don't like to too safe too much. But um, I guess that's why they're the gaffers and we're here talking about them. Right. <laughs> Yeah, but life's about taking risks. Sport's about mm. taking risks, you know. I mean, okay, I've seen sort of Greece grind their way to a European championship. But, you know, with Manchester United's culture and particularly with Manchester United's personnel and where the strengths of your squad lie, you should absolutely be unleashing it. You know, yeah. not from not hanging back and just doing the normal sort of Manchester United cavalry charge at the end. Why don't you have a cavalry charge in the first five minutes? Yeah, fans are up for it. One thing I've, I've obviously noticed with fans being back, that singing section you got by the uh, tunnel, I think it's fantastic, and it gives yeah. you know bring on United. And I mean, I think it's just fantastic because it gives a, uh, you know, obviously all fans sing, but just having it in that area just kind of sets the tone. And I hope Solskjaer feeds off that. That's where Andrew was kicking off. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's where I was going. Absolutely wild. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like that idea of of un unleashing it and I just I've got really good expectations I'm in a good mood now about these upcoming fixtures so thank yeah. you this is like chatting to us and yeah giving us Here's a talk therapies. almost yeah thank oh my you. goodness we should pay thank you by the yeah. hour or something because I'm being our therapist you. yeah for being our <laughs> therapist 
giving us a good pep talk about Man United and highlighting <laughs> a lot of the positives when I think we, we were looking too much at the negatives. Yeah, I was looking at my wine stock to see if I had enough wine left for this run of games. But now, you know what? I feel I feel we like we should champagne. just give Henry a call a week. We need the champers. We should just get a nice long couch, come over to Henry's and lay down on the couch and Henry be like, talk to me, what's on your mind? It can't be champagne, it's <laughs> got to be red. Yeah, got, oh yeah, it's got to be We'll call it winter therapy. Look at that. Therapy. What? There we go. There's, go. Another, there's another spin-off to this. <laughs> All right, well, that was our little chit chat with um, Henry Winter. We call it winter therapy because yes. I really did come out of that feeling much better. I was absolutely bricking it I'm, for this. I'm um, energized. I'm inspired. Yeah, I'm energized. I feel like we should do that. What's all his number? Let's call him up and say unleash <laughs> the beast. I keep saying that because you know what? We do have the Ferraris and the McLarens and all of that. You don't want to go with the Volkswagen bug, even though I love Volkswagen bugs, but you don't want to go with that when you know we've got the Mandem. Let's be honest. So um, anyways, that was pretty good. Uh, absolutely love that chat. Love that we're not the only ones that are feeling feeling it for Donny van der Beek, man. So Donny, it's okay. If you need some therapy too, call us up. We got you. We got you. Thanks. But we also do have another quick segment uh, before we wrap. Ange came up with this one too, because we, we're trialing a bunch of, you know, quick fun segments as well. You guys can tell us if, you know, they're hits or miss and maybe we'll even take your opinion on. Maybe constructive. Maybe. Don't get too excited. I know how y'all are. Exactly. So before we get back into the kitchen, Ange, let's talk about this yeah. segment. <laughs> before the before the pots boil over and all the washing ups sat there, let's let's get into um the next segment, slapped or clapped. So for those that don't know, slapped is when something is pretty good, clapped, maybe not so good. So I thought that we'd talk about a few transfers and we can discuss if they would slap or if they would clap. Now it may be incomings to Man United, it may be outgoings. But the first one that I have got here is Pogba to return to Juventus. What are we saying? If I could, if I could get like a ginormous hand to clap that all away forever and ever, I would. Like, honestly, it would break my absolute heart in two. I mean, I know that's always going to be a cloud, I think, that hovers over us just because... Especially you know, when you've like, got an agent like Mino Iola, you know, throw in, throw in some uh, little uh, he's just, he's salt, salt there. Bay. He is salt he in the rumours, yeah. It. He absolutely loves it. But I think it, it's literally like looking at, you know, y- your ex that got with someone else we know they had a good time without someone else but they finally came back to you and maybe things could be better here and there but you know what things could be better in so many different things in life nothing's exactly. ever really perfect but you know what right now it's working I'm, I think it's working you know I think yeah you know you talked about how Paul needed people at Paul because we're on a first name basis of course. how we needed <laughs> how we needed you know big names around him and proper talent Look at the youth talent that United have right now. Look at, you know, the likes of Greenwood and Rashi, of course, coming back, Sancho there. Then he needed big, big names. I mean, you've literally got Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the biggest names, period, period, yes. like of all time. And, you know, of course there are things that could be better. You also want him to have a direction of where the club is going. I think we have shown that they are, that we have been taking big steps to where the club wants to go again. Um, and I think... Things are good now. Things are going well in this relationship. So for him to go back to Juventus, I want to clap that so far. Back to like kingdom come. And yeah. also, Paul, look at Juventus right now. Ooh. I don't want to throw shade. I don't want to throw that shade on any shady. other club. You're being a shady palm tree there. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit of just a little bit of shade. A little bit of honestly, shade, yeah. I mean, if you have to big yourself up for another rival for your ex's ex come on it's like look at us right now we're looking cute cute we're good we're we're going well of course things could be better but also look at your ex it's a little bit of a hot mess over there as a matter of fact our big man on campus left your ex and is now chilling with us too so you know what very true let's just be cool i think i think i think overall he will stay but you know what mino's gonna mino and you gotta you gotta you gotta remind people that you know you're i suppose your assets can also be other people's assets. He's doing what agents do. True. I would probably agree. I mean, a year ago, I was a little bit vexed to Pogba sometimes. And maybe I would have said that it would have slapped because 
you know what, if a player doesn't want to play for the team, then let them go and be happy with their new bay or the ex bay that they want to get back with, whatever. (laughs) But I think now I definitely agree we've got a good set of players. There are good players around him. He seems to be happy. Um, So, yeah, I I agree, definitely. I would go with with Claps. It would be a shame, considering it seems like all the pieces are just starting to fit and then he would leave. Um, And like you say, where is he realistically going to go? Um, Maybe Real Madrid, but... No, Juventus, like you say, they're not really flying at the moment. It seems like Real Madrid are looking elsewhere now. I think that ship mm-hmm. sailed. So yeah, Plus, I all about agree. financial problems there in La Liga. So and that's the thing, isn't it? And if they're focusing on the Haaland and Mbappe's of the world, mm-hmm. I don't know if Pogba would fit in. But the next one that we've got talking of La Liga, Jules Kounde to Old Trafford, allegedly Manchester United are trying to revive this uh, this situation. Do you know what? Only because I have had the privilege to see him play live and I really do. He, he's got a little something, something. He definitely does. I think that would, that slaps in my, in my. In I our suppose, heads, I'm with you. It slaps. It slaps. It but slaps. In reality, but I think that's the thing. I think if it happens, I will be buzzed as ever. But you know what? If it doesn't happen, I'm not really going to stay up all night and cry about it. Do you know I what agree. I mean? That's I agree. That's kind of where it, I am. It, it, it would slap. But then it could yeah. also be a bit clapped for, you know, if Maguire and Varane are working really well together. Is it going to, you know, rock the boat a bit? So I, I would probably yeah, agree with that. I'm quite happy. I think with Varane coming in, it was a piece that we needed in defence that I was like, ah, yes, I, this I love. Let's give it a chance to work. I know mm-hmm. people like to get on Maguire's case as well. But you know what? Let's give it some time. You know, we're still only talking. We're still in October. It's not even Halloween yet, you know? Let, let's give it some time. And now Port Varane's injured. But it's okay. Do you know what? Like, let's give it some time. Because I think Varane is, as we know, tried and true winner. He wins things. And he's just still so fresh. I still think we need to give the those defensive pieces some time to come through. I know nobody has patience and time in football. But do you know what? Ask me this again, maybe towards the end of next season. And we'll see. Because yeah. I think with the experience of Maguire and the experience of Varane, it's not like they're young and just born. I think they should be able to get it together. We should see if this works or not a lot sooner than later. If he yeah. were like a young man coming through, then I'd say give him a time, give him a season, maybe season and a half. But let's bring this back up again, definitely come end yeah. of next season. And at this season. Definitely. Okay, another one that we've got. Man United to sell Lingard for a cut price of £15 million. Pounds. Does it slap or does it clap? This one, I'm going to let you go first because this one breaks my heart. The thought alone, I am, this makes me want to cry. Thank you. I mean, <laughs> if, if it was like a, a, a and I, I may be like a little bit shady here, but like if it was like a really good price tag and he was going to a club where he would be happy, if it's yeah. not going to work, then then yeah, that, that would slap because Man United get the money, he gets a fresh start where he's going to get more game time. But to sell a player like Lingard for £15 million pounds just to get him out of there that would clap I think it would be insulting to him I think it would be yeah. insulting to his time at the club and I think also insulting to the revival that he's had and the talent that the guy clearly possesses you know I yeah. mean I feel like I do I 100% know where Lingard fits into this team I'll be honest no do I 100% no. know that he's going to be in every single starting lineup no but if you're going to be a team that wins trophies you're going to need depth you're going to need rotation and he fits in in this moment in time so for me it, it would be clapped because I think in some ways, even if it is, is just for 10 minutes to come on and like you said, you know, earlier, be a super sub, we still need him at this moment in time. So, yeah. Yeah, I but. agree. I think selfishly, of course, I want to keep Lingard. Of course, 100%, especially this Jesse 2.0. Had he you have asked me last over. year, different you answer. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you, you would say that, but selfishly of course why would we not want to keep Jesse especially the way he's going especially how we see him come off the bench even with 10 minutes to go and he just he adds that life that swagger when when you need it sometimes you know we, we've recently seen that even the likes of Bruno can have bad days you know uh, he's human I suppose after all but I think a that price tag is mad offensive for both parties um so I think but if we take the price tag out I want to see Jesse go where I know he's appreciated I think, of course, he's appreciated at United. There's no questions there. But you know he wants to start. You know he has put in the work and you know he he feels he deserves. And in my opinion, he does deserve to start. Um, But right now, with the current United setup, he's not going to get that, you know. And 
it would make me want to see him go somewhere where he'll get that because like I said, he's put in this work. He's come from literally the ashes like a phoenix and come back again. He's not a spring chicken. You know, he's 28 years old. He's looking at 30 now. He's looking at how, you know, what trophies he can probably win left with his last couple of years of football. And um, I think if he's going to get that playing time somewhere else, then absolutely. Because last thing you want to see is any bitterness or animosity start to rise. But not for the, for that price. And right now, the fact that I selfishly know we still need him, clap that away. <laughs> yes. Okay, we have now got United to go in for Aurelian Shuameni, the AS Monaco player. Does it slap or does it clap? Do you know what? Just because we saw him in the Nations League final, and of course he was on fire, and now everyone's like, ooh. Oh, let's we're hitting get headlines here. left, right, and center. Yeah, the room is our like, rife. Yeah. It is like the shiny new toy that everyone's like, ooh. He's who's literally he? just like replaced Camavinga as the new shiny French toy. <laughs> literally, everyone's like, oh, how do we get this? And of course, you expect that. And of course, everyone wants to, to, to go in. And I, I mean, he was absolutely brilliant against Spain in, in that Nations League final. But I suppose if we still have our eyes on Declan Rice, I, I think for me, that would be a priority. Obviously, you know, we, we love us some Declan Rice. But then there's a truth that other clubs may be eyeing up Declan Rice, you know, and, and are we in a position to want to get into bidding wars? Um, I think we are. I think United should go for Declan Rice. But maybe if something doesn't happen and United can get Declan Rice come next year, next summer, this would be a nice little, this one would be one that claps. Like from what I've seen, I haven't seen that much because I mean, I don't really watch Monaco week in, week out. Mm. But for around 40 or so million that they were saying, maybe 50 million, why not? Cheaper. And from what you've seen, he's already got a, an international trophy under his belt. So right. there you go. I mean, I think that would clap on paper from what we've seen so far. Anger, as a clap beat. or clap. Slap oh, is good. Sorry, slap. I will slap, yeah. <laughs> You're going to slap. Would, Although it doesn't I sound would, good. It slaps, it slaps as a, terribly as this may sound, but as a plan B for Declan Rice, if that yeah. didn't happen. I think for me, I'm going to go with clapped, not because I think he's a bad player or anything like that, just because I feel like, to be honest, not to be shady to Man United, but it is going to sound shady, you know, looking at the treatment of some of the players that they've brought in, i.e. Donny van der Beek, are you going to be sat there like, oh my God, I want to go and play for Man United and potentially I might be sat on a bench for half a season. Yeah. Just that, and also... In, in that I'm not too sure he would actually go to Man United. But my other mm. thing would be, I just feel like, like the Declan Rice situation, if we want to bring somebody in in that position, I think we need somebody that's going to have that initial impact. Yeah. And whilst he, he still could do that, I would like somebody who I can be a, a little bit surer of, um, that's maybe got that little bit more maturity and experience. That's the only thing, but not taking anything away from the talent. And let's face it, if he was offered to United, we'd probably snap you know the handoff and rightly yeah. so because like I say he is a yeah. talent but the last one here you know La Liga expert that you are I thought <laughs> thoughts on this one no real talk United to sign Osman Dembele there's been a lot of rumors apparently Liverpool are in the running you know a talented player but he loves an injury was it something like 96 games yeah. for Barcelona he's missed since his arrival for that huge price tag yeah yeah and would, it, would but... it slap or would it clap especially when you look at the players we do have. I In like theory might... and on paper, you want to say that it would clap, it would slap. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, 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 I'm going all of that. This I'm is a slap clap. clap up. <laughs> this is a bit of slap clap. This is a slap clap because it's yeah. him. You know, he's talented. I've seen obviously what he can do. Um, but is the, the thing that bothers me the most is that injury thing. That is for me that what, what genuinely does bother me because, um, you know, it's almost like uh, now when you see Luke Shaw go down with an injury, part of your heart just... Oh, just the, gets the PTSD just... from the last one springs it's like, right Yeah, off, it's like... Dun, 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 dun. And yeah. I feel like that's what's going to happen. And I, and I can only imagine one of those. I can't be like getting PTSD from left, right and center. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So I think it would slap in theory just because you know the quality. It's a big name. But I'm going to clap it. Yeah. I completely agree for all of those reasons that you gave. Um, yeah. And I think, you know what? As our doctor, Henry Winter, our therapist said, you know, <laughs> we've got a lot of good 
options going forward yeah. but uh, i'm glad that we did slaps or claps we got there in the end <laughs> to understand yeah, got... which one what they <laughs> meant <laughs> <slap clap. laughs> yeah, let, yeah let us let us know guys what would slap or clap <laughs> for you um and that is the end of our first podcast that was a, a lot of fun that was good the to pots chat are to boiling Henry. Yeah, we need to get back to, you know, the washing up, the ironing, the cooking, the cleaning, all that good stuff. Um, you know, as we leave now, Alexis, where can people find you if they are looking for you, if you want to be found? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, um, of course. Well, as many of you probably do already know, I work for ESPN, ESPN FC. So uh, you can check us there. That's my, my, my day today. And when I'm not there, I'm just... Uh, here at home suffering from you know any PTSD United seem to give us and it's been quite a bit recently especially but we have a we have an exciting run of games and you know what as as I said I'm going to go with the good vibes that Henry has brought and let's go just unleash our beasts let's unleash the beast exactly and as always my name is Angelina Kelly it's not that common if you want to find me and stalk me on social media crack on can't say that I'll accept your request, but who knows? Um, and of course, you can find me on One Football on the daily news, tier lists, all that good stuff on the YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. But yeah, that was great. As always, you know, get in touch. Let us know about the name, guys, what you thought, slapped or clapped. And until next time, we will see you, speak to you all. We'll chat later.